All right, welcome back into Sikkim 365 Radio. Time for Off the Radar, taking a look at some just various stories uh, around the world of sports, including college football, but a lot of other stuff that we wouldn't typically touch on. We are going to start with some college football, though. Did y'all see uh, the, the Nick Saban statement that sent a shock throughout the college football world? No. He says he's got another 10 years left in him. <laughs> I'm sure he does. He, he says he he's Tom got Brady. another yeah. 10 years. He turned 70 on Sunday, and uh, he was wrapping up. He was taking some questions from the media uh, on Wednesday, and uh, he took uh, some questions about you know the fact that, hey, he's going to be turning 70 here pretty soon. And, you know, I think everybody's kind of wondered with, between a Mario Cristobal and, you know, even though the Dabo stuff, Alabama fans just kind of say, no, that's not really a thing. Um, it, it does make you wonder at 70 years old, like how long is Nick Saban going to coach? And there's nothing about when I watch him that makes me think he's anywhere close to it uh, mm-hmm. or makes me even think that he's 70 years old no. practically. I mean, he looks really good for his age. But, yeah, he said, I just kind of keep on keeping on. I don't have a timetable for anything. The only thing that I've ever said is that if I felt like I was writing the program down or I wasn't able to make a positive contribution to the program, then that would probably be time to let somebody else uh, carry the torch. And so uh, one of the reporters brought up, you know, there's always been that uh, connection, not all enough, you know, familial uh, with uh, Lou Saban, a uh, longtime coach. And uh, Lou Saban, at age 80, back in 2001, was hired as the head coach of Chowan University in North Carolina. And so there's been like that, that little Saban connection, you know, over the years or whatever. Uh, so Saban uh, had said back then, because he was the head coach at LSU, that he couldn't see himself coaching it at age 80, right? Well, here he is. He's a decade away, and he's saying, I got another 10 years left in me, man. So maybe he does get there, but that did lead to the the reporter bringing up uh, Lou Saban coaching at 80. Uh, Saban himself saying, I got 10 more years, man. So get ready for more Nick Saban in Alabama, it looks like. Yeah, if you're the coach at Alabama, I, I mean, why would you want to ever leave right now when, when the college football world is at your fingertips? You know, and... He doesn't like, and I'm not saying that those coaches don't recruit hard because they do, and they probably recruit better than most. But when Nick Saban walks into a room and says, "Do you want to go to Alabama?" He doesn't have to sit there and sweat about it like no. like other coaches do. Like, okay, I'll just throw out one uh, that's a pretty like a what's a second tier coach, Mike Gundy. Mike Gundy's got to walk into a room and if he's recruiting somebody against Alabama. He better hope that kid loves Stillwater, Oklahoma. He better hope, but. Nick Saban doesn't walk into a room going, man, I hope this guy really loves Alabama. You know what he does? He walks into a room in front of a guy that might be the highest rated player at a position, whatever class it is. And if he doesn't get him, he'll get the next guy. Yeah. So that, he doesn't it's like worry going to it. Vegas. The people who win money are usually the ones that have the money to spend. Mattress Mac. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mattress Mac for sure. So, yeah, Saban looking like, or at least saying – uh, during that little conference that he's got another 10 years left. So that's that's interesting, especially if it, he actually does coach another 10 years. That'll be a, that'll be amazing. Uh, I don't know if you guys had seen this story, but it's, it's quite interesting when it comes to television ratings and the effect uh, that it has uh, when pitting sports leagues together. The NBA has made a big change in their schedule. Uh, typically, you would see them Thursday night programming. You'd uh, have you know Ernie and Shaq and Kenny and, and, and the whole crew, Charles, uh, but you may have noticed if you do watch the NBA on a regular basis that uh, TNT has sh- uh, shifted that. And they are, in fact, not going to air their usual Thursday night games until January of 2022. Uh, they'll be on Tuesdays instead, Kenny, uh, Shaq, Charles, and Ernie. And the reason why? They don't want to go head-to-head with Thursday night football. Mm-hmm. So Thursday night football has shifted the NBA schedule to where their big Thursday night is now at least until the end of 2021 going to be their big Tuesday night broadcast. Uh, I can imagine Adam Silver and the NBA brass sitting around going, we're going to have to move this because this Jacksonville versus Baltimore game is knocking us off. Yeah. Like we, we get no, you know, and it's like, this is a good, the NFL's done better this year with Thursday night games. They've, this one this week is great. The Packers and the, and the Cardinals tonight. But, uh, you know, most of the time they've been, you know, a one and five Giants team versus a, oh, there's some, a uh, you know some a two done. and four Washington. But even Thursdays, then, Thursdays are still, very forgettable for the yeah. most part. They really are. Sometimes I forget someone's playing, and that's not because of, it, it's just 
but they still have massive numbers. Their ratings are just incredible. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they are. And, and that's so, a great show to be moving around because of that. That's, that goes to show you. Well, you yeah. know, and if you read, like, some of the, you know, stories or responses or people that cover the NBA, or just NBA fans in general, I mean, I think there's uh, some sentiments. Like, you know, your hardcore NBA fans, they're watching right now, and they're as invested right now, and they'll be the same way invested, if not more, by the end of the year. But there are a lot of people who don't care about this portion of the season all that much. I mean, that's just being honest. And, you know, they kind of wait for that Christmas Day slate of games to feel like, oh, okay, now the NBA season has started so I don't know if it'll make um, you know end up being a, a really big deal and they will resume in January of next year uh, TNT on Thursday night so just a, a little NBA note there got a USC uh, card coming up uh, this weekend it's going to be uh, giant John Blockovitz versus Glover Teixeira Glover Teixeira Kamara Usman versus Colby Covington, uh, part two, rematch of that fight. As the UFC gets another pay-per-view uh, underway this weekend. Uh, and that is going to be UFC 267. Uh, the light heavyweight title between Blockovitz, the champion, and Teixeira uh, will be the uh, main event for that card. And that will be in Abu Dhabi as they return to uh, the Fight Island uh, portion of their schedule. Remember, they had to do that during yeah. the pandemic. So they found something there in Abu Dhabi. Like a lot of other very rich people have found a lot of other very very rich people in Abu Dhabi so that's why they keep going back but they had done the whole fight on thing there they're going back and uh, that will be the card but notable about that so if you're looking for you know something additional to watch this weekend got a got a UFC card you can venture into but notable about that is the fact that the voice of the UFC they're they're uh you know iconic voice I think in a lot of ways Bruce Buffer is going to miss his first pay-per-view in over 24 years due to COVID-19. Oh man. COVID-19 breaking his streak uh 24 years. Uh he will miss UFC 267 and uh that announcement was made today by Dana White. He said Buffer was diagnosed and that's why he can't be at the card so uh Joe Martinez will handle in cage announcing Buffer's been with the UFC since 19 19- 96 and appeared on every event since uh and, since arriving and we members buffer i want to say in phoenix was that in phoenix yeah, yeah. i don't remember what city it was yeah, but i remember members interviewing buffer. Him. he was he was great he was yeah yeah no it was phoenix because it was him it was connor yeah. uh, and they had a few other fighters there uh as well and that's kind of yeah one of the first years that the ufc started to kind of promote themselves during super bowl week uh so yeah he's been a part of everything since ufc thir- uh ufc 13 and this is what did I just say? Two fifty-seven. Yeah, that's quite that's quite a lot of fights that he's a uh, he's you know witnessed there. So uh, Bruce Buffer will not be the familiar. You won't hear his familiar voice when watching this weekend. MLB postseason uh, got the night off. Uh, that will resume tomorrow. Astros and Braves will see the series shift to Atlanta, and that series is now tied at one apiece. And uh, the Astros got them one uh, yesterday. Your thoughts on? Uh, splitting in Houston. I mean, uh, you know, the Braves can look at that as a win uh, as they now head back home. The Astros obviously were able to avoid an 0-2 hole and then have to hit the road. Uh, but yeah, we got a, we got ourselves a series. Yeah, I I I, I got mad and turned it off. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> why? Uh, because the Astros beat the Red Sox. I'm still mad at them. It has nothing to do with cheating a couple years ago. I'm 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 kind of. Did past you watch that. Game One? Yeah, I watched game one. Why didn't you watch game one? Because I was enjoying watching the team I was mad at lose. Okay. I right. mean, that was just, I'm still mad at the You're Astros. You're not one of those. What? That you enjoy the team that beat your team. I'm not really. I'm just still mad at the Astros. I'm just mad at the situation. You should Maybe be it's mad at your team. team. I'm mad at, oh, believe me. I'm uh, constantly mad at yeah, them. Yeah, I know. I'm constantly All mad right. at them. But I do think, I think the series is going to get really weird. Neither of the teams have what you would call normal World Series starting pitching depth. Uh, the only team in the post, the only teams in the postseason that did were the Dodgers and the Giants, and they're both out. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. the Ray, the Rays would have at the beginning, but they all got hurt. So it's a weird year. It's going to be a weird series. It's going to be, it's going back to Houston. I, I see no oh, reason sure. that either team's going to to sweep through Atlanta uh, and win three games. So it's going back to Houston because it's going to get really weird. You're going to see some bizarre games. Yeah, it'll be uh, Luis Garcia for the Astros and Ian Anderson for the Braves, and that is uh, tomorrow night. Uh, you'll have game four on Saturday, game five on Sunday. So you got uh, three straight nights of uh, ball games there in Atlanta as the series uh, once again shifts. One note that uh, I, I don't know how it ended up getting brought up because apparently it's it's been uh, the case for a while now, but do you remember when the whole Astros uh, scandal was getting underway or whatever and mm. – um, there was the, the one aspect of the story that wasn't about cheating. It was just about the the toxic culture, if you will, that they were alleging. 
And uh, you may remember a guy by the name of Brandon Taubman. He was an Astros executive who apparently had made the comment in front of uh, the female reporters uh, a couple of years back about oh, I do remember Osuna. That, yeah. And we got Osuna and like apparently got in the, like some female reporter's face and the reason why that was even extra offensive was because Osuna has a history of not really mm -hmm. dealing well with women uh, in yeah. any way. So it was a very bad look for him. He was fired in 2019 as a result of uh, making those comments. And apparently he's back with the Astros and has been for some time now. Yahoo Sports, I saw, uh, had that. Apparently he was reinstated last year. Uh, actually, New York Post had that first, Joel Sher Sherman. But he's reinstated last year. So, you know, not a, a story of major significance by any means, but just – Kind of interesting that I, uh, I don't think I think Jim Crane is very much in a dance like he's better at what he does than Dan Snyder is because he's he's built a winner but I think he's in the very much Dan Snyder like I'm gonna hire her I'm gonna hire and we'll deal with whatever comes but he I mean clearly I mean when the scandal broke you could tell that Jim Crane didn't really care you know and he, when this happened he didn't really care he just responds to it as as maybe he feels like it's necessary to get people to stop talking about it. I'm not trying to dump on Jim Crane any more than he Sounds just Sounds like you seem, are. Yeah, he just, <laughs> he just doesn't seem to give a crap about what people think, and that, that can be good or bad well, depending on perspective. Dave Chappelle. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm all in his corner. So, But, yeah, he just doesn't seem to care, and you know, maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong. I don't know. Well, Taubman uh, was fired uh, two years ago, as I mentioned. Apparently, when he had his first opportunity to reply for reinstatement, which was after last year's World Series, that's what he did. And uh, they reinstated him. And the main reason why Major League Baseball apparently reinstated him was because they found that he had no role in the sign scandal. So, mm -hmm. you know, the comments or whatever he did, like, yeah, that, that wasn't good. But he wasn't directly involved in the bigger story. And therefore, he's, he's been back and, and has been back ever since he was first eligible to, to be so. The one weird thing about that whole, I'm so glad we signed Osuna, was they lost the World Series because of Osuna. <laughs> Like he was in the like the and, and, and they almost lost in the ALCS because of Osuna. And so I was like, why that's a weird position to take. Like you may be glad that he helped get you to that game, but the series there and then the series after, you were definitely not glad you traded for him. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, the Cleveland Indians, we know that they are changing their name. Their plan name is the Cleveland Guardians, which it's kind of whatever to me. Um, but uh, they are being sued by the Cleveland Guardians roller derby team. I saw that. <laughs> and yeah. so uh, we will see that get taken to court or some settlement or something happen. And I didn't dive, like, super far into this because, I mean, I'm not obsessed with this story by any means, but – so I guess somebody had checked out the socials for the roller derby team and they had been kind of inactive for the most part, but all of a sudden, like, here they are. Like, no, we're the Cleveland Guardians. So uh, we will see if if they end up having to change the name or if they, you know, pay them some money to become the Cleveland Guardians. Right. But, uh, ask, yeah, there's at least some challenge to it. Ask Dan Lust the next time that uh, we get him on because he, he had a, a real series, funny series of tweets on it about how Cleveland could have, with a Google search, avoided this oh completely. yeah yeah for sure like most everything else yeah, yeah that's all they had to do i mean there's like twitter account website whatever it's yeah it's very clearly something that's at least been you know uh there before you decided to change your name and i'll close it out with this i mean there's a lot of other stories i could do but i'll close it out with this uh shout out to the utah youths this weekend they're going to honor uh ty jordan and aaron Lowe. uh those are the two young men who, who both tragically died over about the last year and a half uh within nine months of each other as a matter of of fact, uh, they will be honored during a ceremony uh, against UCLA, and they will also be the first players to have uh, in program history to have their number, the number 22, uh, retired by the program. So Jordan had that number in 2020 as a freshman. He obviously blew up, was a really good running back. I was so looking forward to, like, I was like, for the next four years, he's going to be on the Earl list, like, mm -hmm. nearly every week. I was like, bang, we got a Utah guy set in stone, and, and obviously that's so nothing compared to – to the other ramifications of it. But, uh, yeah, had the uh, accidental uh, gunshot uh, wound. Uh, apparently he was handling a gun and, and something happened, and uh, he tragically passed away. And uh, what makes this story even sadder is they obviously were, were friends from their high school yeah. days. And after Jordan passed, Lowe started wearing his number, and then Lowe passes. And so Utah is uh, retiring the number 22. Uh, Lowe passed away on September 26th. Um, and was murdered. So uh, really tough stuff there. But uh, Utah is going to be uh, honoring both young men uh, coming up this weekend against UCLA. It's one uh, thing UCLA. to lose one, but to lose two and lose yeah. them so early, uh, even if it was 10 years apart. So there are a few things that are off the radar. Yeah, and the last thing is Paul sent this. PETA, 
wants <laughs> baseball to change the name of the bullpen to the Arm Barn. Arm Barn. Look, I don't – actually, of all the stupid things that Petey has done, at least they came with a funny name on this one. But uh, it's – cows are not slaughtered more because the bullpen in baseball is called the bullpen. Like, that's not – that's not leading more people. In. People are not watching a baseball game and hear the term bullpen and go, you know what I would like? An inhumanely treated cow right yeah. in my face. So that's, that's just, you know, it's sometimes just I wonder, do people just wake up looking for something they yes, want to change? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. That is half of why you hear yeah. about PETA is because they are bored people with nothing to do that look for anything to complain about yeah. and act I, like it's the biggest fight in the world. As it, somebody said to that, I didn't bring it up because PETA is just, I, I didn't even want to get into it, but as somebody said... That's I'm bringing a, it up because no, they look like idiots. That's fine. That's a Offensive to people who have no arms. I know. That's offensive to people who don't have a barn. Like, that's the same way you can look who, at it. Or the animals that are in a barn. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like, if we really want to just... Yeah. Like, the way people... The, and the the way that they allow uh, certain words like that to... Like, I, certain words I understand. Bullpen... Does that really bother you? Does that really affect your way of life in yeah, any it, way, shape, or form? Or are you just telling the world yeah. that you have nothing else to do? Yes. From Mitchell Jackson, it sounds like half of this chat room. Yeah. Stop, <laughs> Mitchell, stop. Uh, Maybe not half. Double oh. O'Neal, we're eating hamburgers tonight. Yeah, there you <laughs> oh go. Oh, my God. All right, when we come back, a couple of notes, uh, including now.